we do now if we had a mass labor market? Well, John mentioned before the strike in Longview, Washington. Um, there's a president of that local who led the longshoremen in that strike in, in Longview, Washington. And he was willing to freight, face the government, break the law because the laws are all pitted against the, the, the workers. He was willing to do that. He's got he's facing charges from, from uh, law enforcement agencies and stuff because he represented his members and he was willing to fight uh, uh, against the, uh, the company and, and win that battle to make sure his union represented the workers in Longview, Washington. And that, that guy's name, the president of local, is Dan Kaufman. Imagine if that Dan Kaufman was going to run for president. And imagine if the AFL-CIO and the Change to Win unions backed him. And imagine if the National Education Association backed him. Right? What could be done in this coming election? Dan Kaufman could go out to every, to every city in this country, to every area of this country, and argue that if you elect him, you're going to put a worker in the White House. And he could say, I'm going to be a worker that's standing for a worker's wage. I'm not going to accept the president's salary. I'm going to only accept the, the wages of what an average worker would get in this country, or an average skilled worker. And he could put forward a program that would put forward an alternative that meets the needs of working class people today. For example, a program of useful public works to create jobs, to rebuild the infrastructure, including high-speed rail, housing, and similar projects, schools, uh, uh, hospitals, etc. He could argue that we could, we could have a shorter work week with no loss of pay, and this would be not only a, give people more free time to spend with their family, to be politically active, and to do a whole bunch of other things, but it would also create more jobs. And how could that be financed? Well, it could easily be financed out of the out of profits of the top 500 corporations and banks, which, by the way, uh, the 1.6 trillion dollars in profits uh, were, were received last year by the top 500 com uh, corporations, because that goes a long way to eliminating the uh, the, uh, the, the uh, to reducing the work week to 30 hours without uh, loss of pay and stopping up all the unemployment in this country. And of course, once you put people to work, you're also going to get more money from tax revenue just because they're working and less money expended on those other benefits that they need. And also, he would stand for free universal health care, funded from the profits of the insurance companies, the HMOs, the hospitals, the drug companies, the medical machine companies, and the government and, and the government money now that's in health care. That could easily fund universal free health care for everybody. So we could be covered from the, from the point of conception to the point of death, just like people are covered in other countries. And he would also argue for free education, as John was pointing out about the enormous debt facing students right now, free education uh, on the college, not only from kindergarten to pre-K through elementary school, but also on the college level and graduate degrees. And we could also take over and argue to take over some of those rich universities and use their assets like Harvard and all that and merge into one good uh, school system, which would be good for all people, not just for a privileged few. Now, if that agenda was put forward, that would change the debate in this country. It doesn't even matter whether the Labour Party would win in this election. It would change the debate. It would change the dialogue. It would change the discussion. Right now, there is nobody putting forward a, a, an alternative that meets the needs of working people in this country. Nobody is putting that forward. It's shame on the Labour leadership for not putting that forward and for, in fact, just trying to hitch the wagon of the Labour movement to the Democratic Party. Now, uh, the uh, I, I would just say this. Based in this, in, uh, there was a couple questions. I don't know if I have time. I have two minutes. Um, there was a couple other questions. Maybe we can discuss them uh, a little bit, or they'll come up during the discussion. Uh, but I'll just put put forward this. The real agenda right now in the elections, you see it all. You watch television every night. The, the agenda is this: basically, austerity versus austerity. Romney is saying, "I want you to drink this glass of poison." Obama saying, I want you to drink this glass of poison, but I'm going to put a lot of sugar in it, so it'll be sweeter when you drink it. Oh. That's the real choice that's going to, to, to the working class. Oh, Nobody's please. addressing what the needs are. There. Nobody's talking about the 24 and a half million people that are unemployed or underemployed and what's going to be done about it. No, neither candidate is addressing that. So this is why we need uh, a Labour Party. By the way, if you want to see uh, where there's another example where there's no difference between Democrats and Republicans, look at the post office what they're doing to, the, to, to those postal workers. Thousands of postal workers are going to be losing their jobs soon. Thousands of post offices are going to be closed. What's going to happen to those people? Where are they going to work now? What's going to happen to these people? Where are they going to get jobs that pay the kind of money that, that gets paid? Um, no, nobody, neither party is touching that. No, neither party is talking about that issue. 
But here's some questions that I, I would like to address if I had time, but maybe we could start in the discussion. I can bring them up in the, in the sum up. Because these are arguments that are going to be thrown against us by the labor leadership. They're going to, the labor leadership is going to say, if we set up a labor party, it's going to split the vote with the Democrats, and it's going to let the Republicans win. So let's maybe we could discuss that a little bit. Uh, they're also going to say, what about um, if, we run, if we run against the Democrats? Maybe there's this local uh, government uh, program that we get some uh, money from, the local city councilman or whatever. He's going to pull that from us because we're supporting a labor candidate. We're not supporting the Democrats. I'd like to address that question. And also, what about the big picture? What about the, the bigger picture of what's happening in the working class and, and how to transform that situation? So I know I, I don't have time to answer the questions that I'm posing, but maybe we could start discussing them, and uh, and I'll address them to some to some degree in the summation. So thanks. Thank you. Tom.